Mes chers amis, My dear friends, it was a little before Easter, Jesus was walking along the bank of the Jordan where John was baptizing. Behold the Lamb of God, said the forerunner to the disciples who accompanied him. At these words, John and Andrew, the two disciples, followed Jesus. Jesus turned around and with a single look and word, he tied them to himself. Master, they said, where do you live? Come and see, answered Jesus. Then they came and they saw. My friends, you also come to the place where Jesus lives and see not only the divine guest of this dwelling, but near him, the head of his house, St. Joseph. This good St. Joseph, I would like you to love him more and to be able to admire him and make of him your model. Joseph had constantly before his eyes two incomparable models of piety, Mary, the daughter of the Eternal Father, Jesus, above all, the true Son, the only Son whose heart repeated with every beat these words of filial love, you are my Father. In these ideal intimacies, how could Joseph not also have become a pious man, a model of piety? The Gospel formally tells us that he was a just man, a holy man, a pious man in the full sense of the term, a man apart, reserved, withdrawn, separated, a man in whom it seems that everything is inside. He was a man of God, holy gods, all in God, and the consummate perfection of what we are accustomed here below to call a child of God. Saint Joseph, however, kept his particular physiognomy. He is an obedient man, a simple, laborious and silent man, a man of prayer and devotion, a faithful man who is patient and fair. Above all, Saint Joseph is a man of duty. This is the meaning of the word of the Gospel. His life is all about obedience to the law and to the commands of God. If Joseph is thus obedient and submissive, it is because he is above all a humble and simple man. However, he belongs to the highest nobility, he descends in a straight line from David. But his hidden grandeurs, he has no concern to make them known and no one suspects them. He's an obscure carpenter and nothing more in the eyes of man. No fame in his life, no brilliance in his virtues, nothing that distinguishes him except this incredible humility which covers and conceals from profane gaze these marvels of holiness. A man of duty, a man of simplicity, Saint Joseph again was a man of work. My dear friends, when we contemplate the holy carpenter in his workshop in Nazareth, plane or axe in hand, near Jesus, we better understand that work from the hands is a sacred and venerable thing. Therefore, let us no longer be surprised if there are so many men on earth, the immense majority, without question, who pass their days and exhaust their strength, working with arm and hands in the sweat of their brow. My friends, this is beautiful, this is great, because these workers, these peasants, these craftsmen do nothing other than what Jesus did alongside Joseph the Just, the courageous Joseph. However, my friends, after a quite busy life, one morning, the good carpenter did not come to the workshop. Age had not weakened him, illness had not touched him. He was living because his task was complete. 
My dear friends admire on his poor plain bed this dying man with his eyes illuminated by the hope of faith. Mary is on his left, her hands joined, her face tilted, her eyes shining with tears because death is always a separation. Jesus is standing on his right, with one hand supporting his head, the head of St. Joseph, with the other showing him this heaven that he will soon open to him, while his lips, or rather his sacred heart, murmurs a few sweet words like a song of immortality. I am the resurrection and the life. What could be sweeter than the death of the just, of this pious soul? May we, my friends, die like this, sustained by the prayer of Mary Immaculate and strengthened by the assistance of Jesus. Let us ask, my dear friends, St. Joseph to be like him, obedient, humble, hardworking, silent and meditative, so that like him, we may die in peace between Jesus and Mary. For, my friends, when you are stretched out on your bed, awaiting the approaching death, tell him, pray for me, O St. Joseph, patron of a good death. Therefore, ask St. Joseph, good St. Joseph, for the grace to be able to move your lips and join your hands to whisper one last time, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, I give you my heart, mind, and life. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, assist me in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, grant me to die in peace in your holy company. Therefore, we say with our whole heart and with all our might, O Mary, Mother with the sorrowful and immaculate heart, save us, and may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon all of you and abide with you forevermore. Amen.